I hope I can be seen. First off, I just want to give a shout out to Cree Cosmetics. I'm supporting sis. And I caught myself trying to do a little look on the eyes. Y'all, it's so pretty. One of these days, I'm going to do like a get ready with me using a, the palette. But it's so, so Secondly, I want to make a disclaimer. I recent, probably about two weeks ago, my orthodontist put an expander at the top of my mouth. So, when I'm not being careful and cautious, my lisp is like very, very noticeable now. It's giving me a terrible lisp. Ugh. As you see by the title, Freeway Rick Ross, The Untold Autobiography. Y'all, I'm going to give my review on this. I had to make some notes because I didn't want it to be lengthy, you know, because I can talk a lot. Let's get straight to it. So, I'm going to give y'all like a little small description because if you guys want to check this book out for yourselves, I don't want to tell everything that's in it. So, let me give you a little small description. First off, Freeway Rick Ross is his nickname. He's, his real name is actually Rick Ross. He's the real Rick Ross. Um, let me give y'all like a little key fact. He actually tried to sue the rapper. Rick, he didn't talk about that in his book, but I read, I was doing like some research on him, and I saw that he actually tried to sue the rapper Rick Ross for using his name um, without permission, and he ended up losing um, the whole little battle because of like I think freedom of speech, it was some amendment, I want to say it was the first amendment, I'm not sure, or I don't know which amendment it was, but that's how he ended up losing. Uh, it's a little battle, and I hate that, I hope Rick Ross, I hope the rapper gave him some money or something for using his name, because this man is pretty cool. Okay, I'll give y'all a little description. Rick Ross is like, he's from, he says that he's from a small town in Texas, I want to say he said, am texas but don't quote me on that and then he moved to la with his mom he has a brother an older brother as well but i think it was just him and his mom they moved to la because they had family out there excuse me so they moved to la for a better life because they were kind of poor in texas it was just his mom you know she was a single parent although his father stayed right around the corner from him which i think is crazy so they moved into um, South Central LA, which I really want to visit. With his auntie, I think, and some family. And um, he started going to school. He was real good at tennis and stuff. Um, he says a lot of times in this book that he was illiterate. He had trouble reading and writing, but instead he was get, being pushed through school like they do most athletes. I really hate that because the school system failed him. But he was being pushed through school. Once he got out of school, he really didn't have, like, he really didn't know what he wanted to do, you know. So I think he started, like, doing little petty crimes, like stealing cars and stuff. And I hated that. But I think he did, like, some jail time for that as well. And one of his friends uh, ended up introducing him to crack the drug crack cocaine um and Rick Ross tells you that he did not invent crack cocaine but he's kind of like credited with uh its popularity in the United States because you know he started selling it in LA he ended up selling it like he ended up sending it to like different states in the country or whatever like he was the plug for the different for different states so to me i feel like he basically was he's definitely a drug kingpin so he's kind of like the guy that started this whole little crack epidemic in united in america but i like the fact that he didn't take credit for inventing the drug uh he was a multi-millionaire y'all he said he made one time he made up to like three million dollars a day, but he was making like money, money, money. I think he his net worth was about three hundred million dollars. 
And it's crazy because, like, folks see all that money and then it goes into the trash. I really hate that, but, uh, anyway. He was a multimillionaire. I'm sure he still has some money now. Um, he Once he ended up going to jail for, like, trafficking, crack cocaine, um, I really like the fact that when he went to jail, he said that he taught himself how to read. And he ended up reading all these books about the law and stuff like that. And he was able to appeal his life sentence that he had in the 90s, y'all. I think that's amazing. Like, this man couldn't read at first. And here he is being able to appeal his life sentence that he got in the 90s. So he ended up getting, I think, his sentence uh, reduced. Was it reduced? I, don't, I can't keep, I don't know. I don't know if he got it reduced in or if he got out of jail. I mean, out of prison. But anyway, I still think it's amazing that he was able to do that. And um, the the most the thing he's most known for, y'all, is that he said that the CIA, the government, the government was funding his whole business, like his whole drug business, was funded by the CIA. Oh my goodness. I've heard that so many times, but like this book really tells you. I got it upside down. This book really tells you like it was funded by the CIA. And if y'all watch the show Snowfall FX, to me, that sh I hope Snowfall is giving my boy some coins because that show is like exactly what his book is about. To me, it's his life story put in the show. So, I hope they're paying him. They probably are. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't researched it or whatever. But it's just like the the show is definitely the book. But anyway, he was he didn't know he was being funded by the CIA. But if y'all want to read it, you know, you'll find out. He ended up finding out once he went to prison. It, it's, it's crazy. And it's just like the show. So, if you watch Snowfall, then you know what I'm talking about. But I'm not going to tell the whole thing. So, yeah, he was uh, unknowingly being funded by the CIA and the country scandal. My people that kind of know about the history of our country knows that there was this big scandal back in the Ronald Reagan era. It, I'm not going to talk about it. Do you Googles? Do you Googles? The book tells you about it, too. Okay, but... So that's like a description of the book without me trying to tell everything in the book. But let's just get to do I like the book or do I not like the book. As you can tell, because I seem kind of excited about this little booky book book right here. I definitely like it. I give it 5, 10, 5, 10, 20, 100. I give it 5 stars, y'all, for real. Because I'm going to give y'all a reason why some reasons why the book keeps you glued to the pages like i've read some books let me tell you i love my good sis taraji p henson that's my girl i believe she's a fellow virgo i love her so much but i read her book before i read this one and i wanted to fall asleep i might do a review on it i might not but this book keeps you glued to the pages. Like, I probably read this book so quick. I probably read it in like a week, maybe. I read it earlier this summer. It's this it's September right now, September 2019. But I read it this summer. Gluing. I also give it five stars because it's a history lesson, you know. It tells you about it tells you what we were not taught in school, but it's definitely facts. I would bet money that everything in here was facts, you know. Definitely a history lesson. Teaches you some stuff about how drugs, you know, became, well, how the crack era began. It just gives you some really good insight. Don't do drugs. Please don't do drugs, y'all. I also like it because it was real and raw. You know, he, he doesn't sugarcoat things in his book. To me, for a person who doesn't really know drug talk or whatever, it had me feeling like I was probably, uh, uh, 
<laughs> it had me feeling like I was a drug queen pen myself. It, it really did because he was breaking down all these numbers and telling you about how stuff works in the drug business or whatever. So he was pretty real. He he didn't hold back. I feel like he wasn't too biased. You know how like some folks are do like in autobiography but they only tell the good things about themselves or they make themselves look like they was this really good person or whatever holding anything back he didn't make himself look like an angel i really love the fact that to me he learned a lesson he tells you at the end of the book like if he could have done it all over again he would not have done this because he saw how it affected our communities in a negative, 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 negative manner. I can't stress that enough. I love the fact that he learned that lesson, you know, throughout this. Even though he made all this money, he just said that he would not do it again. He hated how it turned out. You know, it still has an effect on our people today, which is crazy. Like, it's still people in jail for selling crack cocaine to me. And cocaine and crack are like tomato, tomato. But instead, there's people out there that get in more trouble for selling crack than the people that get in trouble for selling cocaine when it's basically the same thing. But we all know why they get in trouble for the crack and they don't get in trouble for the cocaine. We know why. But anyway, uh, as far as audience, I would say that this book is for a mature audience. Um... Who kind of wants to learn some history? To me, if you enjoyed the show, like I said, if you enjoyed the show, Snowfall, you would enjoy this book. You know, if you just want to know more about the drug epidemic back in the 80s, you want to know about the crack era and stuff, how it got started, how it, it still hasn't ended, but, you know, how it came about and stuff, about the person that's, to blame for it you know what i mean so it's for a mature audience definitely read it if you are into those things or if you are just a reader if you like to read and you like different stuff to read you know it's definitely eye-gluing would i recommend it i definitely would go ahead i think it was about ten dollars y'all too i bought it off amazon and um kudos to him I hope he's living, him and his family, this the, um, her name is Kathy Scott. I think she helped him write the book. Um, pretty. How did I do? How did I do? Anyway.